The story begins in Yokohama City, where an enormous kaiju suddenly appears. So the authorities sound the alarm, ordering the citizens to evacuate. It starts destroying the city, and everyone watches the news, as a helicopter starts blasting the monster. But it doesn't do anything, so everyone starts to get worried. But an elite unit known as the 3rd Division arrives to fight the kaiju, and their captain Mina fires her railgun, killing the kaiju with a single shot. Everyone celebrates the victory, thinking the 3rd Division is amazing because they were able to defeat the kaiju without any casualties. A team arrives to clean up the mess, and we meet a man named Kafka as he collects a sample for the researchers. He sees his teammates lifting one of the kaiju's organs, but he warns them to be careful, and it suddenly explodes. The blood burns one of his companions, so he helps the man, telling him he's going to be fine. Kafka realizes that the kaiju is massive, so it's going to take ages for them to remove it, and the supervisor orders him to remove the intestines. He doesn't want to do it, because it's a disgusting task, but the supervisor tells him he has no choice, and his colleagues wish him luck, knowing the intestines are filled with the kaiju's poop. He throws up upon seeing the intestines, but he knows he needs to do his job, so he cuts through it anyway. Kafka returns home, but he can still smell the kaiju's poop and he watches the news, realizing that everyone is praising Mina because she has defeated hundreds of kaiju at such a young age. We learn that she's his childhood friend, and he wanted to exterminate kaijus with her, but he's nowhere near her level, so he becomes depressed, wondering how he ended up in his position, but he decides not to think about it, knowing he's helping society by cleaning up the kaiju's remains. The next day, he reports to his office where he meets his new co-worker named Reno, but he says that he plans to join the defense force. Another man named Takuda tells him that Kafka used to have the same dream, but he gave up on it. So Reno thinks he's pathetic, asking him why he gave up, but he explains that he did his best, and he still wasn't accepted into the defense force. Reno doesn't want to end up like him, so he mentions that he will never give up, and he leaves the room, as Kafka realizes that he sounds like a loser. They return to the kaiju, and Reno is assigned to the intestines, so Kafka celebrates, thinking Reno is about to get what he deserves. But the supervisor tells Kafka to work with Reno, so he becomes upset, wondering why he always gets the dirtiest jobs. But the supervisor notes that he has grit, thinking he would have done well in the defense force if he passed the test. During their break, Kafka realizes that Reno has lost his appetite, so he gives him a vitamin pack telling him to drink it so he doesn't pass out. Kafka adds that he needs to plug his nose, saying he needs to do it to survive, but he refuses, so he forces him to do it, and they start working together, as Kafka helps Reno with his job. Later that day, everyone prepares to go home, but Reno approaches Kafka, thanking him for his help. He can't believe Reno is doing this, and he tells Kafka that it's not too late to join the defense force, because they've raised the age limit for applicants. Reno knows he isn't happy with his life, because he looked sad when he talked about giving up, and Reno tells him to do whatever he wants. But he thanks Reno for giving him hope, realizing that Reno is a good person. But at that moment, a kaiju suddenly appears, and it's about to eat him, but Kafka grabs him, and they manage to survive. Kafka tells him to escape, and call for reinforcements once he's safe, but he refuses to leave, so Kafka reminds him about his dream, saying he can't join the defense force if he doesn't survive. So he runs away, and Kafka calls the kaiju, so it starts chasing after him, trying to eat him, but he enters a building, and jumps out a window. In a flashback, we see Mina crying, so Kafka approaches her, trying to cheer her up. She explains that she's sad because her cat died and they stare at the ruins of their city, as they mention that they're going to join the defense force. But he thinks she doesn't have what it takes, and he tells her that he's going to become a better defense force officer, saying they will exterminate the kaijus together. But we return to the present, as the kaiju continues to pursue Kafka, who realizes that he can't escape, so he prepares to fight it, but it crushes his leg, and it's about to eat him. But Reno returns, and he wonders why Reno is doing this, so he explains that he'll never make it in the defense force if he can't even save his colleague. So Kafka realizes he's pathetic, knowing he can't protect anyone, so he doesn't have what it takes to enter the defense force. The kaiju is about to kill them, but a tiger suddenly stops it, as the soldiers open fire, and they blow it to pieces. Mina reports that the target has been destroyed, and she tells her men to follow her, saying they need to check if there are more kaiju in the area. That evening, 
we see Kafka in a hospital, realizing that Mina is amazing, and he thinks he'll never reach her level. But Reno knows that he wouldn't be alive if Kafka didn't save him, thinking Kafka is amazing, so he needs to consider joining the Defense Force. He thanks Reno for making him feel better, saying he has decided to apply to the Defense Force, but he suddenly sees a strange creature, which tells him that it's looking for him, and it suddenly dives into his mouth, causing him to struggle. Reno notices this, so he asks Kafka if he's okay, but Reno is shocked when he sees him. Kafka looks in the mirror, realizing he has turned into a monster, so they both panic, but Kafka explains that he still has control over his body, and another patient sees them, so he calls for help, and they know that Kafka is about to get hunted down, so they decide to run away. We cut to Mina, as she thinks about Kafka, who promised her that he's going to stay by her side, but she calls him a liar, because she's fighting the kaijus without him. She receives a call, and she learns that a kaiju has appeared in the hospital, so she promises to get rid of it. In a flashback, we see Mina laughing at Kafka, thinking he's corny for saying that he will protect her if she's ever scared. He starts to get embarrassed, but she actually thanks him and is happy that they will always be together. We see her gather her team, and she tells them about the situation at the hospital. There's an alert on the news, and the people are told to take shelter. We return to the hospital, and the old man is terrified, so Reno suggests clearing up the misunderstanding, telling Kafka to smile. But when he tries it, it just causes the man to faint. Kafka rushes to help him, but as he touches the wall, he blows it away, and they are shocked by his strength. The other patients wonder about the explosion, and Reno thinks they need to get away. Kafka goes to open the window, but he completely tears it away. He starts freaking out about his body, but Reno says they need to go. We see Mina's team on their way, and she receives a report about them leaving the hospital. Meanwhile, Reno wonders how Kafka turned into a kaiju, asking if he's really still the same guy. But Kafka says he doesn't know, as we see he has taken on a more monstrous form. He manages to turn back, but notes there's another problem, saying he needs to pee. Reno tells him to hold it in, but Kafka isn't able to control himself, so Reno wonders where the pee will come from, and it comes out of his nipples. Kafka is embarrassed by this, but Reno says they need to keep moving. Kafka wonders if he can still join the defense force like this, but Reno thinks it's impossible, because he's become the thing that the force is defending against, thinking he'll be shot on sight. He becomes devastated realizing he will never join the defense force, thinking he won't be able to keep his promise with Mina. Reno notices a sealed off area, thinking it's the perfect place to hide, but Kafka suddenly senses something approaching. We see an explosion, and there's a report of another kaiju, so Mina splits her team up. Reno notes that there will be less people after him, so he thinks it's the perfect distraction for them to hide, but Kafka seems to hesitate. At the sight of the explosion, we see a girl crying, as her mother appears to be trapped. She isn't strong enough to lift the debris, and the kaiju suddenly appears. It smashes through the building, and prepares to eat them, but Kafka suddenly punches it, and completely blows it away, shocking himself with his own strength. He checks on the girl, but she's afraid, so he tries smiling again, but it only makes things worse. He's able to free the mother, but the kaiju suddenly returns. So he tells Reno to get away, and he charges up his full strength. He dodges the kaiju's attack, and delivers a devastating punch, which completely blows it up, causing its blood to rain down. He says it's over, but the girl is still terrified. So he tells her he will go, but as he starts to walk away, she actually thanks him. He's reminded of when Mina thanked him, remembering his promise to stick with her, so he realizes what he needs to do. Reno tells him they should go before anyone else arrives, but he says he's not giving up, saying he needs to go and stand by Mina's side. We see Mina as she arrives on the scene, wondering what happened. She asks the girl about the kaiju, but she's scared when she thinks about it. Mina assures her that they will wipe out all the kaiju, but the girl asks her not to hurt the good kaiju, mentioning how there was a good kaiju that saved her mother. Three months later, we see the cleaning team watching the news, and learn that Kafka has been given the codename number 8. Reno thinks things have gotten out of hand, and we learn Kafka was the first kaiju in history to escape the defense force, so they are all looking for him. The supervisor mentions there's mail for him in Kafka, and we see he passed the test for the defense force. 
He has a look at Kafka's letter, and we see that he also passed. Reno rushes to deliver the news to Kafka, but he sees him in his kaiju form, so he kicks him. Kafka quickly changes back, and Reno warns him he's still wanted, so he can't just expose himself. Reno gives him the letter, but wonders why he isn't excited, so Kafka mentions it's the second round that he normally fails. We learn that the second round is the practical exam, and Reno wonders how he'll hide his body since there will be officers watching. But Kafka says he will take it regardless, and since he's 32, this is his last chance to make it in. On the day of the exam, we see them arriving at the Defense Force's Tachikawa base. We see other participants arriving, and there's suddenly a girl that calls out to Kafka, calling him old. He freaks out and explains he's only 32, but she tells him his car is in the way. He notes that there are plenty of spots, but the girl mentions that 55 is her lucky number. Kafka thinks about teaching her some manners, but the girl decides to move it herself. She takes off her jacket, revealing a suit, and she lifts their car with only one hand, throwing it to the side. Kafka freaks out about the damage, and Rina wonders who the girl is, so she introduces herself as Kakora Shinomiya, mentioning that her favorite hobby is killing kaiju, but she suddenly starts smelling Kafka, saying he smells like a kaiju. But Reno defends him, explaining it's because they're disposal workers, so she looks down on them, saying they aren't supposed to be there. But she sees Kafka lifting the car, and she can't believe he has superhuman strength, thinking he's also wearing a suit. He tells her he's going to be taking the exam, telling her to remember his name, and she believes things are about to get interesting, saying she's going to prove that she's better than him. We meet her butler Sabasu, and they head inside. But Reno becomes upset, because Kafka used his powers to lift the car. So he explains that he only transformed his hand, so that no one will notice, but Reno tells him that isn't the issue, advising him not to use his powers, and Kafka agrees to this. They make their way inside, as Kafka notes that this is his last chance to join the defense force, so he's determined to give it everything he has. We learn that the second round of the exam has two parts, and they aren't sure if they're going to do well during the aptitude test, so they decide to give the fitness test everything they have. But as the exam begins, we see Kafka struggling, as he notes that his performance is worse than before, so he thinks he got weaker because of his age. Kafka doesn't perform well, so Kikora mocks him, because he told her to remember his name, but his ranking is terrible, and he's nowhere near her level. So he falls into despair, but Reno admires him for not using his powers, and he explains that he doesn't want to play dirty, knowing everyone is doing their best to pass the exam. But he thinks about his ranking, realizing he could have improved it by using his powers, but Reno explains that there's another reason why he didn't do well. They start talking about the top dogs in the exam, and Reno tells Kafka about the rank 2 candidate, Haru Izumo, revealing that he graduated top of his class from a prestigious university. The rank 3 candidate named Furuhashi also graduated as a valedictorian from his school, and he's known for his incredible strength. The top candidate, Kagura, was invited to become an elite member of Japan's ground force, but he turned down the offer because he wanted to join the defense force instead. Reno adds that there are other competent candidates, so he knows the competition is going to be tough. But he mentions that everyone's watching Kikoru, saying she's considered to be a prodigy because she was able to graduate from a prominent university at the age of 16. So they think she has incredible talent, and everyone wants to defeat her. Kafka approaches her, saying she's amazing, but her bodyguards beat him up, telling him not to touch her. She thinks he's pathetic, and she promises to keep making him look bad, so he becomes upset, saying he's going to get his revenge. But he thinks he's going to fail the exam, so Reno tells him not to lose hope, thinking the next test is about Kaiju Corp's disposal, so they think they have the advantage. The candidates head to the next area, where they meet Sashiro Hashina, the vice captain of the 3rd Division, who tells them they're about to have their aptitude test. He opens a gate, and Kafka is excited for Kaiju Corp's disposal, but Sashiro tells them they're going to be killing Kaiju instead. Reno and Kafka are happy to hear this, and a kaiju tries to leave the gate, but it's stopped by a barrier. Kikoru sees Kafka freaking out, so she laughs at him, and Sashiro explains that they'll be wearing combat suits during the test. Reno wears his suit, and it fits him perfectly, as it mentions that it has finished analyzing his body. Sashiro explains that the suits are made of organic material taken from kaiju, 
and it grants the user superhuman abilities. The operator Konomi measures the candidate's unleashed combat power, revealing that Reno has only tapped into 8% of his suit's power, while the top students have unlocked over 10%. Sashiro mentions that they should be able to reach 20% after they finish training, and Furuhashi appears to be disappointed with his result. But Sashiro finds them interesting, because only talented candidates can unlock 10% of the suit's potential without training. But Konomi reveals that Kikoru has tapped into 46% of the suit's power, recognizing her as the greatest talent in history, because she's already at the level of a platoon leader. Reno thinks he's pathetic, but Sashiro tells him he's doing fine, saying he can still pass the test. But we see Kafka struggling, as Konomi reveals that his unleashed combat power is 0%, which is the lowest number in history, so Sashiro laughs at him, thinking he's going to fail. He can't believe this is happening, thinking there's something wrong with his suit, but Kikoru knows he's hiding his powers, and she's waiting for him to use it before the exam comes to an end. They prepare for the final test, as Sashiro explains that they need to eliminate the kaiju in the area, saying the drones will be monitoring their actions. He reveals that the suits have shields, which the examiners will activate if a candidate's life is in danger, but he explains that the candidate will be disqualified if this happens. The test begins, and Kikoru starts jumping around the area, shooting down the kaiju in her path. But Kafka struggles to move around, saying his weapon is too heavy, because his suit isn't giving him power. Rina wonders what they should do, knowing they aren't strong enough to defeat the kaiju, but Sashiro reveals that Mina is watching them. So Kafka remembers his promise to her, and he recalls that this is his last chance to join the defense force, so he's determined to succeed. He thinks there are drones in the area, because the examiners want to see how the candidates will adapt to difficult situations. So Reno realizes that they don't need to kill the kaiju themselves, and they decide to do their part by supporting the others. They see Haru's group fighting a kaiju, and they're struggling against its armor, but Kafka knows its weakness because he disposed of its body in the past. So he throws a bomb, and it stuns the kaiju, as he explains that it has incredibly good hearing, so the explosion overwhelmed its senses. He tells Haru to aim for its stomach, so he follows Kafka's instructions, and their bullets are able to penetrate it, causing the kaiju to explode. He thanks Kafka for his help, and he starts looking for another kaiju, thinking he can pass the exam without using his powers. But a kaiju suddenly attacks him, sending him crashing against a wall, and the examiners note that he's injured, thinking he can't continue fighting. So they prepare to activate his shield, but he refuses to give up, knowing Mina is watching him. The kaiju is about to eat him, but it suddenly gets blown into pieces, as Kikoru arrives, telling him she can clear the area alone, so he can just stay on the ground, calling him a loser. The top dogs realize she's going after the main target, and they're determined to eliminate it before she does. But they realize that she's stronger than them, thinking it's because of her unleashed combat power. Kafka struggles to get back up, realizing his leg is broken, and Sashiro calls him, advising him to drop out, because he's too injured to continue fighting. So he wonders if it's time to quit, knowing he has no talent whatsoever, so he thinks he's going to fail. But he still refuses to give up, because he doesn't want to abandon his dream, and the examiners are surprised, as he starts tapping into his suit's powers. He manages to get back up, so Sashiro agrees to let him continue. Kafka still struggles, and he worries about holding Reno back, but Reno is determined to stick together. We see Reno carrying him, and Sashiro laughs while watching them. They try to catch up with Kikoru, and Reno tells Kafka to handle the attack. Meanwhile, we see Kikoru easily taking out the kaiju, and she's so fast that no one can even help her. She reaches the Hanju, the final target, and she throws a grenade to stun it. She then jumps between its teeth, and finishes it with a single shot. The kaiju falls, so the test comes to an end, as the drones are recalled, and Kafka can't believe Kikora killed it so quickly. Mina is impressed by her strength, and Sashiro notes that she cleared the test so quickly that no one else dropped out, and we learn that Kikoru is the daughter of the director. Kikoru hopes she made her father proud, and she prepares to go and laugh at Kafka again, but there's another kaiju that appears, and she suddenly gets shot. Meanwhile, Kafka wonders about their result, but the destroyed kaiju suddenly get back up. We see Kikoru stopping her bleeding, and the kaiju is surprised she can still move, but Kikoru is shocked to hear it talking. 
She tries to shoot it, but the kaiju fires first. The examiners hear her screaming, and they detect her abnormal vitals. Sashiro wonders what's going on, and they also see the revived kaiju. Konomi notes that they have gotten even stronger, and the Hanju is given a fortitude rating of 6.4. Sashiro thinks it would take a whole platoon to take it down, and Mina orders for all the remote shields to be activated, telling Sashiro they need to head out. The examinees are told to evacuate, but Kikora thinks she can't run, because if the Hanju isn't dealt with, many people will die. She manages to close her wounds thanks to her suit, and she prepares to keep fighting, thinking she needs to be perfect, but the Hanju instantly smashes her. In a flashback, we see her with her friend Risa, who is happy for her because she got the top score, but Risa's father picks her up, and Kikoru is left alone. Sabasa joins her, mentioning her father will be home today, and he thinks he will be happy with how she did. Kikoru is excited, but when she gets home, her father doesn't care about her score, thinking it should be normal for her to be at the top. He tells her that celebrating a single success only leads to failure, and he says she needs to be perfect for the sake of their nation's future. She remembers her father's words and continues to fight, but the Hanja keeps hitting her. She tries to stand back up, but the Hanja suddenly grows horns, and Konomi is surprised to see it regenerated its offensive uni organ. It begins charging up an attack, and Sashiro wonders if they'll make it in time. Kikora thinks it's over for her, and she apologizes to her father that she couldn't be perfect. The Hanju prepares to finish her, but Kafka suddenly appears, telling her she did a good job. She wonders what he's doing there, and there's a huge explosion, but we see that Kafka blocked it, and he transforms into his kaiju form in front of her, saying he will handle the rest. Meanwhile, we see everyone else evacuating, and Kagura shoots a flare to help guide everyone. Reno hopes that Kafka is okay, and we see that a few moments earlier, they learn that the Hanju came back to life, and Kikoru is fighting it alone. Their orders are to evacuate, but Kafka disappears, and Reno worries that he's planning on transforming. Back in the present, Kikoru wonders what's going on, and Kafka begs her to keep his secret. The Hanju charges up another attack, but Kafka just slaps it away, and he promises to tell her more after the fight. Konomi detects his energy, but the cameras are knocked out from the explosion. She notes that he has a fortitude rating of 9.8, but Sashiro says it's impossible, thinking the explosion must have scrambled their measurement system, because 9.8 would be the strongest kaiju in history. Kafka knows he doesn't have much time, so he decides to finish things with a single punch. He clashes with the Hanju, but he completely overwhelms it, blowing it into pieces. Kikoru wonders who he is, and Kafka suddenly rushes at her, but he takes out a kaiju behind her. He tells her she shouldn't put herself in such danger, but Reno suddenly arrives and starts reprimanding him for transforming. They start to argue, but Kikoru ends up passing out. Sashiro and Mina arrive on the scene, and they wonder what happened. They get a report that Kafka and the others made it to the shelter, but Sashiro thinks Kikoru isn't strong enough to be responsible for this. Sashiro is reminded of the previous incident three months ago, so he wonders if they're related. We see Kafka in the hospital, and Reno notes that Kikoru's condition is also looking good, mentioning that she's getting the best treatment. Kafka gets jealous of this, but Mina suddenly visits them, and she thanks them for saving Kikoru. She leaves after this, and Kafka wants to call after her, but decides to wait until he becomes an officer. Kikoru wakes up, and she's visited by Sashiro. He tells her that everyone survived, and he thanks her for dealing with the Hanju. She thinks about Kafka saving her, and she decides to keep his secret. The incident is reported on the news, and the mysterious Kaiju is surprised there were no casualties. He suddenly gets a call, telling him his break is over, and we see him transforming into a man. As he leaves the toilet, we learn that he's the newest member of the cleaning squad. Kafka is released from the hospital, and he returns to work, but he's freaking out, because he isn't sure if he's going to pass the exam. He starts blaming Reno for his poor performance, but their boss appears, saying they both received letters, and Kafka opens it, realizing it's the exam results. We see the successful candidates gathering in a hall, but the top dogs realize that Kafka isn't there, thinking he must have failed. Kikora joins them, and we learn that she obtained the top score, so she's going to be handling the oath. 
Furuhashi asks Rino about Kafka, and he's about to answer the question, but the ceremony suddenly begins, as Mina enters the hall. Kikoru is ordered to speak on behalf of the class, and Mina announces that there are 27 successful candidates, saying they're now considered as officers in the defense force. Kikoru promises to fulfill her duties to the best of her abilities, and Mina thanks her for saving everyone during the exam. But she knows that Kafka was the one who did it, and she wonders why he isn't in the ceremony, thinking he deserves to pass. She's curious about his powers, so she wants to see him again, and at that moment, Kafka suddenly joins them, surprising everyone. We learn that during the deliberation, the officials talked about Kafka's result, thinking he has no potential whatsoever, so they considered failing him. But Sashiro decides to accept him into his platoon, because he was able to support the other candidates during actual combat. Mina explains that he isn't included in the ceremony, because he's going to be enrolled as a cadet, but Kikoru is happy that he was able to enter the defense force. Mina is glad that they all volunteered for the defense force, but she explains that the kaiju are getting stronger, so she warns them that their missions are going to be dangerous. She's certain that there are going to be casualties, but she promises to do her best to help them, telling them to believe in her. Kafka tells her that he's going to be standing next to her, but everyone's shocked by his behavior, thinking he's insane. She tells him he's disrespectful, so she decides to punish him, telling him to do 100 push-ups, and Sashiro laughs, telling her to go easy on him. But she walks away, and Sashiro notes that she's smiling, as Kafka starts doing the push-ups. Sashiro suspects that he's connected to the kaiju that was rated 9.8, because his vitals disappeared when it was detected. So Sashiro thinks he's hiding something, so he decides to monitor him. Kafka struggles to complete his push-ups, and he barely manages to get 100, as everyone celebrates, but Kikoru interrupts them, telling him she wants to talk to him. They head to a diner, where Kafka tells Kikoru how he got his powers, and she can't believe this is possible. He thinks about telling the defense force about it, thinking they might be able to cure him, but she tells him it's a bad idea, because they will experiment on his body until he dies, saying they will use him to create special weapons. So he begs her to keep his powers a secret, and she agrees to this, reminding him that he saved her life, but she promises to kill him if he goes on a rampage. We see Reno in the middle of a training session, and he hits the targets with amazing precision. A voice mentions that he was able to complete the exercise in over 2 minutes, and his combat power has reached 18%. Everyone is impressed with his progress, and Furuhashi wants to keep up with him. So he goes through the exercise with everything he has, and he's able to beat Reno's time, as the voice mentions that his unleashed combat power is 20%. He tells Reno not to get too cocky, but they see Kikoru completing the test, as the voice reveals that she was able to destroy the targets in one minute, and her combat power is at 55%. She taunts them, saying she's better than them, and Haru thinks he'll never defeat her, but Kagura tells him he's falling behind, and he realizes that Kagura has surpassed his unleashed combat power. Everyone hears Kafka struggling, and we learn that he was able to destroy the targets in 6 minutes, but his combat power is still at 1%. He celebrates, telling Kikoru that he's no longer at 0%, but Sashiro tells him he's pathetic, warning him that he's going to get fired in 3 months. Sashiro orders everyone to run around the perimeter, and Konomi notes that they're competing with each other, so he thinks they're going to improve. Everyone takes a bath, and Kafka is exhausted, as Furuhashi boasts about his muscles, but Reno thinks he looks average, and he doesn't believe Reno, so they start arguing. Kafka tells them his muscles are bigger, but he loses control over his breathing, and his belly sticks out, so Furuhashi laughs at him. Kagura joins them, and they see that he looks totally shredded, so they hide in the water, realizing they're no match for him. We cut to Kikoru, as she sees Mina in the laundry area, thinking she looks amazing, and Kikoru wonders why her combat power is off the charts. So she asks Mina about her training, and she tells Kikoru to stand next to her, saying she will teach her the basics. We return to Kafka, as he hears the others talking about Mina, saying she inspired them to join the defense force. Reno thinks she's like a superhero, but Kafka tells them she's his childhood friend, and they're surprised to hear this, so they ask him to share his story. They continue training together, as Kafka struggles to keep up with the others, and one evening, we see Kafka staying up late, thinking he needs to study harder. Sashiro joins him, telling him to go to sleep, 
but he explains that he doesn't want to get fired, and Sashiro knows that he's doing this for Mina, because he heard them talking in the bath. Kafka admits that he promised to fight by her side, but Sashiro explains that he's the vice captain, so Kafka needs to steal his spot to achieve his goal. Sashiro tells him he'll never become the vice captain, and warns him not to get too attached with the other officers, because they could end up dying during their missions. At that moment, the alarm rings, and everyone realizes there's a kaiju, so they prepare to head out, as Sashiro tells Kafka it's time for his first mission. We see the civilians being evacuated, as a Hanju appears in the middle of a city, and it's surrounded by smaller kaiju. The defense force wants to minimize damage to the surrounding area, so they plan to defeat the Hanju at the central sector. Mina volunteers to get rid of it, saying she will destroy it from a distance, and she wishes everyone luck. The officers make their way to the city, as Sashiro tells them it's time to hunt Kaiju, but Kikora still can't believe that Kafka is Kaiju number 8, and she looks forward to seeing him unleash his powers. Japan's ground force prepares to fire their artillery, as Sashiro's platoon sees the Hanju. He tells them that Mina will deal with it, and they just need to focus on eliminating the smaller kaiju, which are being spawned by the Hanju, because they might escape from the area. He orders everyone to prepare for battle, and they get fired up, as Sashiro tells them to have fun. Kafka knows that he needs to prove himself, because he could end up getting fired if he doesn't perform well, but he tells Reno that he's excited for the mission. A group of kaiju appears, and Kikora charges in with the others, but Kafka slowly climbs down the building. A helicopter arrives, and we learn that Mina has reached the sniping spot, as Konomi tells the ground force to lure the Hanju to the central sector. So they open fire, launching several rockets at the Hanju, but it has no effect, and it starts moving forward. Sashiro tells the new recruits to show him what they're made of, and Kafka tries to unleash his suit's power, but a kaiju blows him away, and Kikoru advises him to stay back, because he's still at 1%. The experienced officers look down on the rookies, telling them not to get in the way, and they mention that nobody knows about the enemy's weak spots. But Kikoru starts blasting the kaiju, blowing them to pieces, and her seniors are amazed by her combat skills. We see Furuhashi in action, telling Reno to keep up with him, but he realizes that Reno was able to kill a kaiju on his own, wondering how he was able to do that. So he explains he's using freezing rounds, saying it fits his style, because it allows him to slow down the enemy while he's fighting. The seniors are impressed with the new recruits, because they're eliminating the kaiju by themselves, and the platoon leader Nakano, explains that the batch is filled with talented members. Kagura and Haru are competing against each other, wanting to see who gets more kills, as Nakano notes that they're complete opposites, but she thinks they're both attractive. She thinks the rookies are amazing, because they're outperforming their seniors, and Konomi reports that Reno and Furuhashi are at the forefront. But Kafka realizes he's being useless, so he wonders what he can do to help, and he sees a dead kaiju, thinking he might be able to find its weak spot. So he starts dissecting it, realizing that the core isn't where it's supposed to be, and he sees it at the base of the neck, so he reports this to Sashiro, advising the officers to hit them from the side. He adds that the kaiju have reproductive organs, and he warns Sashiro that they might spawn new kaiju if the organs aren't destroyed. Sashiro thanks him for the information, and Konomi shares this with everyone, as he realizes that he was able to help the defense force, thinking he might be able to fight by Mina's side. But he sees a massive explosion, and we see that the ground force is continuing to pressure the Hanju, but it has already reached the central sector, so they decide to retreat. The defense force shoots its legs, trying to immobilize it, as Mina takes aim, and she charges up her railgun, increasing her unleashed combat power to 96%. Sashiro tells Kafka to watch closely, as Mina fires her weapon, blowing a massive hole into the Hanju's body. Kafka can't believe how powerful she is, and Sashiro tells him he's nowhere near her level. She fires another round, destroying the Hanju's head, and it crashes to the ground, but she keeps firing her weapon, and Konomi tells her it's already dead, but she doesn't care, and she continues to obliterate its body. Kafka thinks she's incredible, and Sashiro asks him if he has given up on his dreams, telling him that he will never reach her level. He asks Sashiro if he can match her strength, but he reveals that he can't, saying he specializes in dealing with smaller kaiju. A kaiju suddenly appears behind him, but he instantly slices it into pieces, and Kafka is surprised by how fast he is, because he couldn't even see Sashiro's movements. 
He explains that he's better with a sword, saying the captain and vice captain are the most powerful members of the force, so they're given special weapons which fit their fighting styles. Mina reports that the Hanju has been eliminated, but countless kaiju appear, and they start swarming the city. Sashiro tells everyone to deal with them, but Konomi reveals that the rookies are tired, so their combat powers are falling. Sashiro knows this is a difficult mission, but he's impressed that the rookies were able to keep up, so he thinks about taking them to the next level. We learn that most officers retire with an unleashed combat power of 20 to 30 percent, and those who are capable of going beyond that range become captains. He knows that Kikoru has already reached that level, but he notes that another candidate has potential, thinking Reno might also have what it takes. Furuhashi wonders why he's struggling to keep up with Reno, because he spent five years training while he was in college. They receive a report that a kaiju has entered their sector, so they decide to check it out, and they see a strange man dressed as a disposal worker. Furuhashi tells him to evacuate, but he reveals that he was the one who loaded the kaiju with reproductive organs, wondering how the defense force found out about it. We see a cleaning squad watching the incident, but their boss asks them about the new member of their team, and they realize he's gone, so they decide to look for him. The man shoots Furuhashi, blowing a hole into his chest, but the man notes that he missed the heart, thinking he isn't accurate while in his current form. So he reveals his true form, and they realize he's the kaiju that defeated Kikoru, so Reno tries to call for reinforcements, but he realizes that his communicator is malfunctioning. The kaiju reveals that they're in his domain, which is completely hidden from the outside world, telling them they won't be able to contact their comrades. He attacks Reno, hitting his leg, but the kaiju wonders why he isn't hitting his target, realizing that Reno can predict his movements. We learn that Kikoru warned Reno about the kaiju, telling him to watch its fingers, because it moves whenever he prepares to attack. The kaiju fires another projectile, but Reno dodges it, and he shoots the kaiju, telling Furuhashi to retreat and call for backup. He refuses to obey, but Reno begs him to do it, so he runs away, as Reno reveals that he's afraid, knowing he doesn't stand a chance. But he wants to be like Kafka, who is willing to sacrifice his life to save others, and he charges in, planning to buy time for Furuhashi to escape. We see Furuhashi running away, but he starts hating himself, realizing that he's been stuck at 20% combat power for two weeks. We learn that Mina saved him when he was young, and he wants to be as strong as her, but he can't even defeat Reno, who was able to surpass him like it's nothing. Reno continues to charge in, but the kaiju appears in front of him, preparing to finish him off, but Furuhashi saves him just in time. We learn that Furuhashi feels pathetic, because he always needs to be saved by someone else, and he tells Reno that he doesn't need to be saved. Reno asks him why he didn't escape, and the kaiju reveals that they can never leave his domain without his permission. So Furuhashi decides to fight with Reno, saying he will try to create an opening for him. Reno charges in, as Furuhashi stuns the kaiju with a conductor round, and Reno unleashes his maximum combat power as he opens fire on the kaiju. But the kaiju uses a wall of corpses to defend himself, and he launches a counterattack, hitting Reno repeatedly. We cut to Sashiro, as he receives a report, which mentions that they've lost contact with Reno and Furuhashi. So Kafka realizes they're in trouble, and he sees something moving in a kaiju's corpse as Kikoru approaches him, telling him that the mysterious kaiju is in the area. Reno collapses, as Furuhashi tries to save him, but the kaiju knocks him down. He starts torturing Reno, as Furuhashi reaches out to his rifle, thinking Reno has the potential to become a captain, and he doesn't want Reno to die, so he's willing to risk his life to save him. But Furuhashi realizes that his rifle is broken, and the kaiju is about to kill him, but Kafka suddenly arrives, and he punches the kaiju, knocking his head off. Reno thinks he's weak, because Kafka was forced to transform to save him, revealing that he wanted to get stronger to stop this from happening. The kaiju gets back up, and Kafka tells Reno to take a break as he prepares to fight the kaiju. He asks Kafka why he's protecting Reno, saying Kafka is stronger than the other kaiju, so he wants to use his body. The kaiju suddenly launches a projectile, and Kafka coughs up blood, but the kaiju realizes he's tough, so he prepares to attack Kafka with everything he has. Reno tells Kafka to escape, as the kaiju launches countless projectiles, but Kafka unleashes a powerful roar as he protects himself with a barrier. 
he starts pummeling the kaiju, who tries to use the wall of corpses to defend himself, but Kafka rips it open, and he continues his assault, breaking through the kaiju's defenses. The kaiju knows he doesn't stand a chance, so he decides to retreat, but Kafka hits him with all his might, blowing him away. We see that the kaiju's core has been exposed, and Kafka is about to finish him off, but two officers see him, and they report that they have spotted kaiju number 8. We see Kikoru fighting a kaiju, but she struggles against it, because she's already exhausted. She manages to slice it in half, but she thinks about Kafka, wondering where he is. We learn that she was with Kafka before he left to rescue Reno, and he told her that he can sense the humanoid kaiju, so he transformed into his kaiju form, telling her to take care of everything while he's gone. But she hears the report from the officers that spotted him, so she becomes worried, realizing Kafka is in trouble, as Sashiro gives the order to neutralize him. The kaiju recovers, and he manages to escape, realizing that his domain has been destroyed. But he now knows how Kafka fights, so he thinks he'll be able to defeat him in the future. He tries to kill the officers, but Kafka shields them, and the kaiju tells him that they'll meet again, as he disappears. Kafka jumps away, knowing he needs to escape from the defense force. So he hides in an alley, but Sashiro finds him there, and he reports that he has made contact with Kaiju number 8. He tries to attack Kafka, but he manages to evade, realizing that he can barely keep up with Sashiro's movements. Sashiro realizes he's a worthy opponent, so he removes his limiter, and his unleashed combat power reaches 92% as he prepares to fight with his full power. Kafka worries about hurting him, but he suddenly gets slashed. He struggles to keep up with his speed, and he realizes Sashiro is on a completely different level. His arm gets cut off, and his core is revealed, but he manages to regenerate himself. He notes that regeneration uses up a lot of his stamina, so he knows he can't take too many hits like that. He tries to fight back, and Sashiro recognizes him as a Daikaiju. He gets a strange feeling, but decides not to worry about it as he charges up an attack, unleashing a double slash, which cuts off Kafka's leg, but he follows up, and Kafka realizes he's aiming for his core, but he predicted he would do this, so he catches the blade. Sashiro gets stuck, and Kafka uses the chance to attack, blowing him back, and he manages to escape. We see Kikoru as she thinks about Kafka, wondering if it's really okay to trust him, but he suddenly returns. She tries to scold him, but catches him as he falls, and he apologizes for letting the humanoid kaiju get away. He tries to head over to help Reno, but Kikoru notes he's in no condition to help, telling him to worry about himself, because Sashiro might figure out he's a kaiju. Sashiro thinks about the encounter, and Mina takes a picture to remember his failure. She wonders if Kaiju 8 was strong, so he notes how he was at the level of a daikaiju which makes him the first one since the incident five years ago. Sashiro notes how he doesn't seem to attack people indiscriminately, and he thinks back to how Kafka only attacked his weapon, realizing the strange feeling he felt was because it felt like he was fighting a human rather than a kaiju. But Mina tells him to get some rest, and notes that no matter what kind of kaiju it is, it's their job to neutralize it. They suddenly get a report, and Ikaruga tells them that the kaiju that attacked Reno and Furuhashi was the same one from the exam, mentioning how it had a human form. We see the humanoid kaiju in a weakened state, as a car honks at him. The driver tells him to get out of the way, and he points at the man, but nothing happens. The man is confused at what's going on, but the kaiju transforms and eats him, as we see the kaiju taking on the man's appearance. We hear on the radio that he's been designated as kaiju number 9, but he thinks about how he can kill Kafka. We see Reno waking up in the hospital, and Kafka is glad he's okay. He thanks Kafka for saving him, but they panic, as we see Furuhashi is next to him, thinking it was Kaiju 8 who saved them, so Kikoru quickly mentions how Kafka found the core in the smaller Kaiju, and he buys our explanation. Furuhashi wonders why Kaiju 8 saved them, thinking he was pretty cool, so Kafka gets happy hearing this. Soon after, the squad has a party to celebrate Reno and Furuhashi's recovery and their first successful mission. The chef reveals they'll be having the best wagyu, and they can't believe it, but the chef notes that Haru must be served the finest food, so Kafka wonders who he is, and we learn he's the heir of the Azumo Technology Group, who are the largest manufacturer of anti-kaiju equipment, and Kafka is amazed that they make the suits that they use. 
We see everyone enjoying the food together, and Reno is happy they organized it, but everyone starts to argue about their performance, and Kafka complains to Haru about his suit, calling it defective, because he couldn't defeat a single kaiju. Reno worries about the chaos, but realizes they are all talking about the mission, and are figuring out ways to get stronger. The chef is glad Haru reached out to them, asking about his father, but Haru notes how they haven't spoken since a certain incident. Kagura suddenly appears, looking for the toilet, and Haru wonders how much he heard. Sashiro calms everyone down to make an announcement, and reveals that thanks to Kafka's contribution, he's being promoted from a cadet to a full officer. He's overjoyed to hear this, and everyone celebrates for him. The next day, Kafka meets with Mina, and she officially gives him the promotion. He swears to give it his all, but as he leaves, she tells him not to get too excited because he's still a long way from being able to stand by her side, but he's happy that she remembers the promise. She notes that it was Sashiro who recommended him for the promotion, so she tells him not to let him down. We see Kafka studying late at night, but he gets tired and decides he's had enough. As he heads back to his room, he sees the training room open, so he wonders who left the light on, but he sees Sashiro training, and he realizes he's mentally recreating their fight. Sashiro notices him, and Kafka asks what he's doing, so he reveals he's working on how to defeat Kaiju 8, and Kafka is terrified listening to him. Kafka respects him for wanting to protect everyone, and he also promises to do his best, but Sashiro reminds him he's useless at 1% power, but gives him 1% of his expectation. He tells him to get some rest, but we see that in the skies above, there's another mysterious Kaiju. We see Kafka thinking about Sashiro, and he's determined not to let him down. He's about to return to his room, but he suddenly sees fireballs raining from the sky, and they crash into the buildings, causing widespread destruction. Sashiro feels the ground shaking, so he asks the operation room what's going on, and Konomi tells him that multiple Fortitude 6 Kaiju are attacking the base, saying they all belong to the Hanju class. So he prepares for battle, and he reminds everyone that Mina is away, so he's going to take over, telling them to eliminate the kaiju. But he notes that there are no reports of damage from outside the base, and he finds this strange, realizing they aren't behaving like normal kaiju. Meanwhile, Kafka notes that they're being attacked by wyvern-type kaiju, but he can't believe they're working together, and he realizes that something's wrong. So he decides to call Sashiro, telling him that wyvern-type kaiju are always alone, and Sashiro believes a leader is controlling them. A humanoid kaiju approaches Sashiro, asking him if he's the strongest human at the base, and he confirms this, so the kaiju prepares to fight him, calling him his prey. Konomi warns Sashiro that the kaiju is at Fortitude 8.3, so he's extremely powerful, but Sashiro tells everyone he's going to deal with him. The kaiju suddenly attacks him, and he tries to crush Sashiro, smashing the ground, and destroying everything around him. But we see that Sashiro was able to evade, and the kaiju finds him interesting, so he prepares to fight seriously. He lets out a loud noise, and the other kaiju respond to him, so Sashiro realizes he's the one controlling them. The kaiju tries to kill him, and he manages to evade, but he notes that the kaiju is incredibly strong, thinking he's going to die if he gets hit. He continues to avoid the attacks, and he strikes back, but it has no effect, as he realizes that the kaiju's skin is too tough. We see the other officers shooting the wyvern-type kaiju, but they're struggling to defeat it, because their bullets can't pierce through its armor. So Kafka advises them to attack the kaiju from behind, saying it's their weak point. Kagura and Haru encounter a kaiju, and Kagura distracts it, as Haru prepares to shoot its back, but another one suddenly appears, so Haru falls back, as he realizes that the kaiju are working together. So the officers wonder how they can defeat the kaiju, because they're protecting each other's backs. But Kikoru suddenly appears, and she attacks a kaiju head-on, killing it in one hit, as she reveals that her new weapon can smash through its armor. We learn that the 3rd Division gave it to her, because she's the 3rd strongest officer in the Division, and the Kaiju are becoming an even greater threat, so they have decided to treat her as part of the main force. But Kikoru mentions that she doesn't like her weapon, because she thinks it doesn't suit her. A Kaiju tries to blast her, but she leaps forward, as she recalls how Sashiro told her that her weapon can be activated to generate shockwaves. So she decides to try it, creating a shockwave which pushes it forward 
as she strikes the kaiju with even more power, killing it in an instant. Another kaiju appears, so she charges in, and she takes a swing, as she activates her weapon again, blowing a hole into its body. She sees another one attacking from above, but Reno shoots it with his freezing rounds, causing it to crash into the ground, and she delivers the finishing blow. She tells Reno to work with her, and he agrees to this, but Kagura and Haru don't want to get left behind, so they decide to do their part. We return to Sashiro, as the kaiju continues to pursue him. He notes that the kaiju is enjoying the fight, and he orders Konomi to open the gate, allowing them to enter the training grounds. The kaiju manages to land a hit, blowing Sashiro away, but he realizes that his arm has been sliced off, as Sashiro reveals that he removed his limiter, saying he doesn't have to worry about the others while he's in the training grounds. We cut to an officer named Akari, who is about to be killed by a kaiju, but Kafka rushes to her, and he transforms his legs, allowing him to reach her just in time. She thinks he used his suit to save her, and he tells her he has improved, but the kaiju prepares to blast them. Kikoru suddenly arrives, and she tells Kafka to retreat with the wounded officers, while she and Reno deal with the kaiju, and Kafka observes them as they fight, thinking their teamwork is amazing. The off-duty officers arrive to help, and everyone works together, as Kafka notes that they're pushing the kaiju back. Sashiro continues his fight against the leader, and he's able to slice through the gaps in his armor. So the kaiju protects himself, thinking Sashiro is becoming predictable but he suddenly cuts through his armor, slicing him into pieces, as he realizes that Sashiro aimed for the gaps as a diversion. But his body quickly regenerates, realizing Sashiro is a worthy opponent, and he tries to fight back, but Sashiro easily overpowers him, and he realizes that his core has been exposed. Sashiro delivers the finishing blow, and everyone thinks the fight is over, but they realize that something's wrong, as the kaiju suddenly transforms into a massive creature. We learn that the kaiju shifted the position of its core, so Sashiro wasn't able to destroy it, and it covers the area with steam, as Konomi reveals that it has reached Fortitude 9. So she becomes worried, thinking he won't be able to defeat it, and Kafka realizes Sashiro is in danger, so he decides to help him. Sashiro tries to fight, but he realizes that his attacks are working, because his blades aren't effective against giant kaiju. So he thinks about targeting the core in its back, but he suddenly starts bleeding, as his suit informs him that he's about to reach his limit, and it suggests cancelling his maximum release. But he fights on, thinking he might be able to defeat the kaiju in one minute, and he tries to attack from behind, but it suddenly attacks him, blowing him away. His suit mentions that he has reached his limit, so it cancels his maximum release, and Konomi thinks he's dead. But he reveals that he's okay, saying his shield protected him, but he wonders how he can defeat the kaiju, knowing he's at a disadvantage. He cuts the kaiju, but it immediately regenerates, and it tells him he doesn't stand a chance, as a smaller kaiju pursues him, and it self-destructs, knocking him down. In a flashback, we learn that Sashiro came from a family of swordsmen, and he's considered as a sword prodigy. But his father tells him to give up on joining the defense force, because he isn't good at using other weapons, saying swords are becoming obsolete. But he tries to join anyway, and a high-ranking officer thinks he isn't good enough, because his skills are useless against giant kaiju. He eventually meets Mina, who knows he's a sword specialist, so he thinks she's going to disparage him, but she tells him she needs his help, asking him if he wants to join her. She explains that she specializes in eliminating giant kaiju, but she struggles against the smaller ones, so she tells him to clear a path for her whenever she needs to shoot her target. We return to the present, as Sashiro refuses to give up, because he doesn't want to let Mina down. He attacks the kaiju with everything he has, trying to slice it into pieces, but it's able to catch him, and it's about to crush him to death. Kafka sees this, realizing his life is in danger, so he decides to help Sashiro, as he prepares to transform. But everyone suddenly hears Mina's voice, and she shoots the kaiju, cutting off its arm, and allowing Sashiro to escape. It prepares to attack her, but she fires again, hitting its other arm, as it orders the smaller kaiju to pursue her, but she manages to avoid them. The kaiju quickly regenerates, and Konomi tells Mina to target its core, but Sashiro knows this won't be easy, so he tries to help her, and he attacks its legs, trying to immobilize it. But it doesn't work, as he notes that his power output is too low. Kikoru suddenly joins the fight, and she attacks with everything she has, 
but she gets pushed back, as she realizes she isn't strong enough to damage the kaiju. So Sashiro cuts through its armor, and she delivers a devastating blow, which causes it to lose its footing. Kikora realizes she has reached her limit, but she's able to create an opening for Mina, who blows a hole into the kaiju's back, exposing its core. But Konomi tells her she has one bullet left, and the smaller kaiju try to stop her, but the other officers arrive, shooting them down. The kaiju is about to recover, so Sashiro keeps attacking it, knowing he has to stop it from regenerating. He knows he isn't strong enough to defeat it, so the only thing he can do is create an opening for Mina, but he realizes he's about to get eaten. Mina is glad that she chose him as her vice captain, and she removes her limiter, as her combat power reaches 96%, and she fires her last bullet, blowing the kaiju into pieces. So everyone celebrates, and Kafka watches Sashiro from a distance, thinking he's amazing. Mina tells him to rest, knowing he has reached his limit, but the other officers know she's also exhausted, so they tell her to leave the smaller kaiju to them. But at that moment, everyone realizes that the kaiju are gathering above them, and Konomi reveals that they have formed a massive bomb, which threatens to destroy the entire base. Everyone thinks they're doomed, but Kafka suddenly charges in, so Sashiro tries to stop him, thinking there's nothing he can do against it. But he wonders how Kafka is able to move so fast, and he transforms into Kaiju 8, surprising everyone, as Konomi reveals that he's at Fortitude 9.8. He realizes that he let his friends down, because they were helping him hide his secret, but he knows he needs to do something, or everyone's going to die. So he uses his boosters, and he takes to the skies, as he punches the bomb with all his strength, blowing it away. But he becomes exhausted, and he crashes to the ground, as the bomb detonates, causing massive destruction. But he uses his body to protect the other officers. Everyone survives, but Kafka thinks it's all over for him, because his secret has been exposed, and he can barely move his body. The officers point their guns at him, as Mina calls him Kaiju 8, telling him he's under arrest. We see the higher-ups watching the incident, and they can't believe there was a kaiju in the defense force. They discuss what to do with him, and the director general, Iseo Shinomiya, decides to bring him in, saying he will order the third division to hand him over. We see Kafka in a detention facility, where he wonders what's going to happen to him, and he recalls how Kikora told him that his body might be used to create a special weapon. Mina and Sashiro join him, telling him they'll be transporting him to the headquarters, so they release him, and escort him outside. He thinks they hate him, because he kept his powers a secret from them, and they walk past the other officers, as Kafka notices Reno, thinking he's upset, because he tried to protect his secret. Kafka is about to enter the transport, thinking it's all over for him, but Reno suddenly calls him, saying he'll wait for him to return. The transport prepares to head off, as Mina reveals that there are no cameras there, and she reveals that she's grateful for his actions, because he saved everyone without hesitation. So she explains that she will help him prove that he's human, and report all the good deeds he has done as an officer, thinking the defense force will release him if they don't see him as a threat. She reveals that the third division doesn't consider him as their enemy, but she says it's time to leave, so she tells him he's about to be transferred to another base. But he asks her if he can still try to stand by her side, and she tells him she'll be waiting for him, so he starts crying as the convoy heads off. Days later, Kafka's friends think about him, and Furuhashi still can't believe he's Kaiju 8, because he was always so cheerful. Akari tells them he saved her life, thinking he's a great person, but Kagura explains that they don't get to decide what happens to him, saying it's up to the Neutralization Bureau. Haru thinks the world will panic if they learn about Kafka, because they might suspect their neighbors, if they discover that humans can transform into Kaiju. Konomi visits Mina, who asks her if she can fix the documents, and she realizes it's Kafka's records, so she agrees to do it. Sashiro's subordinate asks him about Kafka, and he explains that he wants him to return, because he wants to fight him again, knowing he held back during their last fight. Kikoru visits Aseo's office, and we learn that he's her father, but she asks him to spare Kafka, because he saved her life. But Aseo calls her a fool, and he shows her an x-ray report, which reveals that Kafka has a core in his body. So Aseo thinks he is inhuman, saying he's no different from the kaiju that killed her mother, but she explains that she still believes in him. We see Kafka in a maximum security prison, where the scientists monitor his condition. 
but he thinks about his friends, thinking he owes them an explanation, so he wants to see them again. The boys report to Mina, who tells them their base was destroyed during the last attack, so it's no longer a good place to train new recruits. She explains that the kaiju are getting stronger, and the higher-ups are concerned, thinking they're becoming an even greater threat. So she mentions that they need to be prepared, and she tells the boys they will be training with the most talented rookies from other divisions. Haru thinks the higher-ups are doing this to monitor the officers who were close to Kafka, but she denies this, saying he has nothing to do with this. Furuhashi tells her he wants to stay with the third division, but Reno agrees to train with the other rookies, and Furuhashi tells him they're going to get split up, but he doesn't seem to care. Moments later, Haru is about to call his father, when he hears Kagura on the phone, and he mentions that he wants to save someone, so he asks for help. He realizes that Haru was listening to him, and Haru becomes curious, so Kagura tells him that he was talking to his old commander in Japan's ground force. Haru can't believe he's doing this to help Kafka, so he explains that he doesn't want to lose him, because he considers him as their comrade. We return to Kafka, as he thinks about what Mina said, thinking everything's going to be fine once he proves that he's human. Iseo suddenly appears, and he tells his subordinates to release Kafka. They warn him that it's too dangerous, but he explains that Kafka can easily break the restraints if he wanted to, so they let him go. But Aseo suddenly starts shooting him, so he uses his arm as a shield, but Aseo tears out his skin, and he collects a blood sample, as he tells Kafka he's a kaiju. But he denies this, saying he's human, so Aseo gives the signal, and his subordinates deliver his gauntlets. He wears them, and they merge with his body, as he mentions that he will dispose of Kaiju 8. Kafka is determined not to transform, because he wants to prove that he's human, but Aseo attacks him, slicing off his arm, and sending him crashing against the wall. The other officials are impressed, realizing Aseo hasn't lost his touch, and we learn that he's considered as the strongest soldier in history. Kafka transforms into a kaiju, and he tries to escape, thinking about dodging until Aseo reaches his limit. But Aseo keeps pursuing him, and he manages to land a devastating blow, but Kafka recovers, realizing Aseo is as powerful as a massive kaiju. We learn about Kaiju 2, which appeared decades ago, and it almost destroyed an entire city, until the defense force was able to neutralize it. Iseo's gauntlets are made using its body parts, and he's the only one capable of using them. He easily overpowers Kafka, punching him with tremendous force, and he realizes there's no escape for him, as Iseo tries to finish him off. But he suddenly transforms into his full Kaiju form, and he lets out a piercing scream, as Kakora realizes that something's wrong. Kafka notes that he can't control his body, and the kaiju inside him tells him to go on a rampage. Meanwhile, we see Rina working out, and Furuhashi wonders why he agreed to go to the other unit when they're all worried about Kafka, but Rina mentions he needs to get stronger as fast as possible, so that he can be the one to protect Kafka next time. Furuhashi wonders if Kafka will really make it back, but Rina decides to believe, so Furuhashi gets fired up to train as well. Mina is summoned to the headquarters, and she's told to wait for the results of Kafka's examination. Meanwhile, Kafka goes wild and he charges at Iseo, but Iseo dodges, and notes that he's attacking like a wild animal. Iseo prepares to attack his opening, but Kafka twists his body to attack again. He tries to stop himself from inside, but his body keeps attacking. Kikoru tries to call out to him, and Iseo manages to counter with a sonic punch. But he notices that Kafka's core is missing, and his body suddenly regenerates behind him. The two clash, and the force starts to destroy the shelter, while the observers are shocked, because it was built to withstand a Fortitude 10 attack. The other chief notes that it seems like Iseo is holding back to test Kafka, so Kikora realizes he's giving Kafka a chance to survive because of her. The fight between the two continues, and Kafka takes a chunk out of Iseo's body, the other higher-ups note that it's looking bad, and no matter what Iseo tries to do, it seems Kafka has the upper hand. Iseo unleashes a massive burst of electricity, but Kafka fires back with his own energy and blows him away. Kafka grabs him, and starts smashing him into the ground. He knows he's about to kill him, and he sees Kikora watching, so he tries to stop himself. Kikora thinks about everything they have been through, and she decides to keep believing in him, so she tells him not to give up. 
He tries to break himself free, but the kaiju appears in front of him, and it suddenly eats him. His body prepares to finish Asao off, and Kafka feels himself falling, but there's suddenly light, and Mina grabs his hand, telling him that she's waiting for him, so he comes to his senses. His body attacks, but Kafka ends up hitting himself instead, and he declares that he's human. He ends up collapsing, and his body returns to normal, but an officer prepares to execute him. Iseo tells the man to stand down, and we meet the first division captain Narumi. Iseo calls for the medical team, and Narumi wonders what he plans on doing with Kafka. The examination is concluded, and the higher-ups ask Mina what she thinks is Kafka's commanding officer. They note that they have mostly reached their decision, and her report won't change Kafka's fate, so she won't need to feel responsible. She decides not to discuss whether Kafka is a kaiju or a human, but describes him as a defense force officer. She mentions his contributions, and how he has saved many of his comrades, especially when he stopped the kaiju bomb. The higher-ups think it was possible only because he had powers, but Mina notes how he constantly failed the defense force exam, and had 0% power with his suit, but he never stopped trying to save people, and he cares for others more than anyone. She thinks back to the accident with her parents when she was young, but Kafka always stood by her side. She thinks he has more humanity than anyone, and his heart can be trusted to be an officer. The higher-ups think her answer is too vague, but Asayo thanks her for her report. They prepare to dispose of Kafka, but the decision is left up to Asayo. Kafka wakes up, and he's surprised he's still alive. He's shocked to see Asayo next to him, and he's glad he's okay, so he's still able to face Kikoru. He wonders if he was accepted as a human since he's still alive, but Asayo calls him a kaiju. However, they're letting him live for the time being, and we see that Asayo decided not to dispose of him. The other members think it's risky to keep him alive, but Asayo thinks he can be controlled, and he isn't sure if they turned him into a weapon, it would be as strong, and they need their forces to be at their best with all the recent attacks. The other members still object, but Asayo reminds them of the disaster 10 years ago, when Kaiju 6 killed over 200 officers. So if something like that happens again, they will need Kafka's power. The higher-ups remain opposed to the decision, so Asayo tells Kafka he needs to prove his worth if he wants to survive. He knows they're just using him as a weapon, but he swears he will get them all to acknowledge him as a defense officer, and he falls asleep while thinking of Mina. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.